So good afternoon and once again. So welcome to today's class. Um, and our topic for today is mastering DAX for reporting, and it will be taken by um Emmanuel Bassi himself. So um moving on to um the ground rules um for the class as usual, there's punctuality. Um Let's always have an open mind toward learning. There should be one class, participate as much as you can. Let's respect each other. Ask as many questions as you want. Um, your mic will always be muted. And if you have any questions, please always raise up your hands and you'll be unmuted. So um, moderators for today, is, uh, my name is Demitope Fatima. I'm a business intelligence analyst. I uh, currently work at Nanometrics and I'm a Microsoft Certified Power BI Analyst and a Microsoft Certified Azure AI. So um, moving on to our speaker for today, um, in person of Emmanuel Bassi. Um, Emmanuel Bassi is a Senior Analysis Consultant at D2 um, Consulting. He's the CEO at uh, Guru Innovation Hub. The CEO at Quinan's uh, Tech. He's a versatile uh, data analyst with over four years of experience in transforming data into actionable insights. He's um, a three times Microsoft certified trainer. And he has also successfully uh, introduced over 10,000 individuals to the world of data analytics equipping them with the skills to um, excel in this dynamic field. Um, Emmanuel is also a data consultant, a cloud advocate, a tech and uh, evangelist, um, and a uh, fabric analytic engineer. His proficiency in tools such as um, Excel, Power BI, SQL, allows him to deliver precise and impactful data solutions known for his clear communication and ability to demystify complex data concepts. Um, is it dedicated to, is dedicated to fostering continuous learning and driving innovation within the data analytics community. Um, please join me to welcome Basi as he take over the section. Welcome, um, Basi. Um, it's good to have you here. I'll, I'll stop sharing my screen now. Thank you so much. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, and um, I trust you are all doing very, very well. Okay, so let me share my screen. Oh, you guys can't see my screen. Sorry for that. I guess that's <laughs> that has skipped already. Yeah, I think when you stop the music, that's when. Uh, oh, oh, okay. Sorry about yeah, that, so guys. I've, I've helped you to share the screen. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So good afternoon, everyone. And um, trust we are all doing well. So I've just put a face to the long read, you know, this afternoon. So I, I'm sorry I can't show my face now. Um, my light just stripped off and they are trying to get it uh, back on. All right. So. Today, we are looking at mastering DAX for reporting, and I know that um, a lot of us have heard about DAX, and we wondered what DAX is. Uh, one of the things that we've heard around DAX is that DAX is hard. So, and in fact, if you've heard DAX is hard, just give it to me on the, on the chat box. You've heard DAX is hard. Someone has told you before that DAX is hard, right? Yeah, give it to me. I want to look at people that not think that DAX is hard. Yes, Daniel said yes. Okay, so who again? Come on, guys. We have like 40 minutes to the kind of hard favor. Okay, well, I do yes. All right, so we have like about 40 minutes for us to see what we can do with DAX. So we're going to look at the overview of DAX, components of DAX, we we'll also look at the uses of DAX in Power BI. We we'll look at pillars of DAX and DAX functions. 
then we'll also have a q and a so guys keep your questions coming i'm going to be in your dm to and i'm going to be looking at the comment sessions to um answer most of those questions so we said that what is dags function so dags sorry i think one of my slide is missing all right sorry okay one of my slide is missing actually so i don't know what happened to so what is dax so we say that dax basically means dax is um called data analysis expression and what we call dax data analysis expression it's used in various language it's used in various scenarios where uh, we use it in excel dax is used in excel dax is used in um, power bi dax is used in um different analytics softwares like um, tabular editor and all that for you to be able to write custom reporting so most of the times i'm sure when you were doing what we call data modeling we you you were told about two things we have implicit we have implicit um dax and then what we are going to look at today is the explicit dax the one that you have to write it all by yourself so you're going to think about the logic and then you're going to try and write those logics all by yourself so we have what we call the dax functions dax is made up of um, uh, functions and what that is does for you is that it does half of the programming for you if i want to write a one plus one in python I have to hard code one plus one, right? But for if I want to write it using a uh, what do they call it? If I want to use, write it using DAX, I'm just going to call up a function sum, and then sum is going to automatically add up those columns for me. So a DAX function is an inbuilt function provided in the DAX language to enable you to perform various actions on the data in the tables within your data model and i hope you all know already that one of the greatest strengths for um writing very simple and good DAGs is your data model please give me a second so components of DAX. so these are some of the things that are made up of DAX. we have functions we have functions, we have operators, and then we have expressions. For every single DAX function you're going to see, you are going to be wrapped up around these things. We have functions. When, when you talk about functions, you're going to talk about sum, you're going to talk about sum x, you're going to talk about average. Then we're also going to look at the if function, which we use most of these things are used in Excel, right? We use most of these things inside of Excel. Then we're also going to talk about the ultimate DAX function, which is calculate. And one of the things that calculate helps us to do is that it could help us to change a context. Then while you're writing your DAX, there are some of the things you call operators. We have the plus, we have minus, we have multiplication, we have division, we have the um, and and the or. Right. We also have the and, we have the ampersand, which is used as the and, and then we have the or, the double pipeline, which we have here. So all these are used in terms of logic, all right, when you're writing um, logics. Then we also have expression. So when you're writing a DAX function, especially when you're writing an expression, you're definitely going to need an operator for you to be able to write these logics. Okay, so use cases of DAX. DAX could be used in creating new columns. DAX could be used in creating new tables, or we call them calculated tables. DAX could also be used in what we call creating measures. Uh, we call all the, these things measures, then dynamic measures. We call it measures, right? Everybody writes measures. And also we could use DAX to add security, which is the row level security. Right, we could use DAX to write at a level of security. So what we basically mean by row level security is that I could add a security feature within my DAX that requires that a particular user does not see some level of information that is supposed to be seen by another user. So a typical example is that if I have four sales team members who are representing East, North, um, North, South, East, and West, 
I can put up a right user to write um, a row level security that will make sure that these guys do not see, the guys in the north do not see what the south, east, and west guys are showing. And the guys from the south do not see what the east, west, and north guys are seeing. So I make it in such a way that it's everybody only sees a report that concerns them. So DAX has the power to be able to do that for us. And then we have some pillars of DAX. So there are three core pillars of DAX. And for you to be able to understand DAX, you need to understand these critical three things. We have tables. You need to understand data model. So data is important for you to understand data model, right? Very important for you to understand data model. So um, the how do tables relate to each other? What are the filter directions? You need to understand filter directions. Then we also need to understand functions. So that basically means that we need to understand the know the function, the classes of functions. We need to know how the functions behave. It's important to understand how functions behave. Then we also need to understand how do you yeah, manipulate right. tables with functions because you need to understand how do you manipulate your tables with functions. Then you also need to understand the evaluation context. So you need to know how to manipulate filters and rows inside of a formula. So I'm going to show you this particular chart right here. So this particular, um, not chart, this particular uh, breakdown is the breakdown of all some of the functions that we have within DAX. So um, these functions are grouped based on their functions. We have the aggregators, right? We have the um, um, aggregators, and then we have some of the time intelligence functions, and then we have the logical functions, right? We have the table functions. These are parts of the, sorry guys, I don't know if you can see my screen clearly. Um, can somebody please confirm yes. that you can see my mouse? Yes, we can, we can. Okay, all right. So we have the time intelligence functions. Then here we have some of the things that we call the table functions. So two things you need to understand. The ones that we see coming on, coming all up on red, all right? All those ones are, um, when you use them in your calculations, they are going to provide a, they are going to return a single unit for you. While the ones that you, you've seen on the blue, right? I don't know, sorry, I don't know colors. All right, I know that that is blue. I think there is a sky blue. It's ladies are no, no colors. All right, so the ones you see coming up on red, those ones are basically going to be return table functions. So if I want to calculate, do something that has to work on a table, if I want to create a new table, these are the functions that are going to help me to be able to create a table. But if I'm trying to create something like I want to just get a single number, then I'm going to be using these guys that we have on red. So these are logical functions. These are um um aggregators right so we can use we have the sum we have the average we have the mean we have the max we have the count we have counter we have count rules and we know i'll just talk about count counter and count rules because three of them have count in them but they, they um they act differently right remember that one of the things we talked about is that you need to know how functions work so how does count work the way that count will count helps us to count numerical columns. Counter helps us to count columns that are, because when it comes to Power BI, it's a bit strict. Counter helps us to count both numerical and categorical columns. While the count rules counts the entire rules that are inside of a table, right? So count counts numerical. Counter counts both numerical and categorical columns, while count rules counts the total number of columns that are inside a team. Then we have these, um, 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 I call them senior aggregators, right? There's actually a name for them. Once I get the name, remember the name, I'm going to um, tell you guys. So what does sum x do for us? So one thing that sum x does for us, remember that sum takes just one argument, but sum x helps us to be able to 
creates an expression. So a typical example is that we want to be able to um, calculate something, right? And then what some Excel us to do is that we need to be able to calculate an expression. Remember what an expression is? Two plus two, two minus two, three times five. That's an expression. So you want to be able to multiply two columns together, then we'll need to use a sum X. So when you get to the um, practical session, then we are going to see how that is done. So I'll just stop sharing my screen and then I'll move us straight to the practical session. All right, so uh, before you can perform DAX, then you must make sure that your you must make sure that you have a model. You can do it without the model data, but I'm going to be doing it with the model data. So you make sure that one of your model data is already open. Okay, so let's just move down there. I'll stop sharing and then share another screen right now. So if you have questions, please drop it on the, on the comment section. I'll just look through the questions as I'm teaching and then I could just answer them. All right. Sorry, let me go next to an extra screen. Extend. All right, just a second, it's coming up. All right, so I'm going to share my screen now. All right, so, um, All right. Hello, Mr. Emmanuel. Are you still there, please? Okay, I think maybe it's network. All right, sorry, um, I'm trying to share my screen. I'll try to drop out the call. All right, so let's go again. Oh, okay. So okay. we can see your screen now. All right, thank you. All right, so let's take a look at some of the things that we can do in DAX. So we say that one of the basic foundations for you to have a good DAX is for you to have a proper data model. So you notice that I have a data model here. And if you have a good data model, which is you have a data that has to do with a one-to-many relationship, right? Where you have your facts data, facts table, and also your dimension tables in place. If you have such a data, then it's going to be easier for you to learn, um, for you to write DAX. But if you have a data that has to do with one of the things that data that do not support DAX very well, it's not impossible for you to write DAX with it. But if you have a data that has to be like a snowflake kind of data, then it's going to be a bit difficult. You're going to find it 
difficult to write that or to think through the logic of that because when you're writing that it's more about the logic that is behind what you are doing so it's important that you have a very good data model so earlier on we talked about that that can help us to do three critical things we can use DAX to um we can use DAX for um, creating tables we can use DAX to create measures and then let me see if you guys are following what is the third thing that we said we could use DAX for so i'm going to just look at the chat box to know if you guys are following so you can use DAX to create a table we can use DAX to create a measure and we can use DAX to create what Mm -hmm. Let me see, let me see, let me see. Security, okay. Columns, create new columns. All right, awesome. Add, evaluate, okay. It's always said evaluation context, okay. Not that. All right, so, okay. So you guys are following. Interesting. Okay, so let's use DAX to create a simple table. So you remember some of the things that we talked about that were our table functions. So we are going to use DAX to be able to create. Thank you, everybody. Thank you for contributing. All right, so let's create DAX. So I'm going to go back to my report view. And for me to be able to create DAX, I can go to the modeling tab. So under the modeling tab, we are going to see all these four, three things or four things that I talked about. So here we have the security where we talked about, you can create rules, right? right? And then you can view as the rule that we are talking about. But here on this particular ribbon, calculations ribbon, we have a new table, all right? You can generate a new table, you can generate a new column, you can generate a new measure, all right? and when you're trying to create a new table, that basically means that you need to use what we call a table functions. So if I share the last slide I shared with you guys, I'm going to create a new table right now. So if I share this slide, I told you that the ones on blue are the ones that we call table functions. So I'm going to use this table function to be able to create calendar table. So if you're working based on um, what do they call it? If you're working based on business intelligence, you understand that creating a calendar table is extremely important. Um, someone can see my screen. So please, if you can't see my screen, you could help me. Okay, don't worry. I'll just stop sharing and share back so that everybody no, can, I can see. see your screen. I can see your screen perfectly. I think um, the person might need to like um, check their network. I can see your screen. Okay. All right. Yeah. Sometimes the way team works is that one person needs to leave and come back and I don't want them to leave. So I'll just stop sharing and share back so that all of them would see. All right then. Thank you. Okay. So I think my screen should be back up in a moment. Yes, it should be. It's up now. Yeah. All right, so all those that can't see, I'm sure you can see now. So let's create a new table. So like I said earlier on, what are we going to use? We are going to use the calendar auto. So the calendar auto function, what it help us to, helps us to do is that it helps us to be able to create, aha, uh -huh. said so these guys were here. All right iterating aggregators yeah so we are going to look at them in that format okay so what the calendar auto is going to help us to do is that the calendar auto is basically going to help us to be able to generate a list of all our calendar so it goes into the calendar auto function is going to go into our facts table and through our date table it's going to help us to generate a whole lot of, um, it's going to help us to generate a whole lot of um, calendar, uh, the list of all, unique dates, list of all our calendar um, calendars. So let's go into this table. I'm going to click on new table. 
then under the new table, something pops up. So one of the things that works with DAX is that there is an IntelliSense that works on DAX, all right? So I'm going to say calendar. I want to create a date table, so I can call it date table. And I'm going to say that I'm going to call up a function. So once I type, so I say that there's an IntelliSense that works inside of DAX, that once I type, of, types, um, type something, something is definitely going to pop up. All right, so let's understand how that structure works. So I'm going to put calendar. So if I call up calendar, everything that has to do with calls of C, everything that has to do with calendar pops up. So I'm going to select and hit my tab button, and then I get to get um, calendar auto. So let me reduce the size of this a little bit. So if I reduce this, one of the things you're going to notice is that it says that calendar auto wants a fiscal year, fiscal year month. All right. So impute your fiscal year month inside of calendar auto. So it says returns a table with one column of dates calculated from the model automatically. It says it's going to return a table with one column of dates calculated from the model automatically. So now, fiscal year month basically means that what year does your business start? What month of the year does your business start? All right. So a typical example is that some business year, a business year doesn't start in January. Most business years don't start in January. Some organizations start their business year in the second quarter of the actual year, which is April. Some start their business year in June, right? Some use the third quarter, some even use the last quarter so that they do a projection that whatever happens in January doesn't really affect them. You get the point. Yeah, some September. Thank you, Michael. Yeah, so that's basically it. So, but for now, we are not interested in that because the company we are using is a sample company. So I'm just going to close this and then I'm going to hit enter. All right, so if I hit enter, a date table is automatically created for me. So if I go to my table view, I'm able to see a list of all the dates. So you see that I have one single date for January 2024, uh, January 1st, 2024, another date for January 2nd, 2024, and so on and so forth. So every single date that is inside of my facts table has been created automatically. So one of the things that you notice is that if I go to my table view here, you notice that a date table has been created, right? So what do I do? I need to bring this date table and put it down here with the others tables. Yes, so other dates, dates, and then I can create a one-to-many relationship single and I'll simply just save it. Okay, beautiful. So we've created the dates table. So we said that we can use that to create a table. We've created a table, right? So we said that another thing we could use that to do is that we could create a column within DAX. So I'm going to use DAX to be able to create a column. So I'm going to go to um, this dates table, right? I'm going to stay within the dates table and I'm going to create a new column and then I'm going to create a column called the year. So I'm going to say that my year equals to, I can call up the feature called year, right? I can call up the DAX feature that is called year. That feature that is called year returns the year of a date as your integer, right? And then the criteria or the argument that is asking for is a date. So how do I sort that out? It's asking for a criteria called date and then returns the year of a date as a four um, integer. So this is how you understand what is expected to be returned. But this is when you look at this, this gives you a guide on what you are supposed to do. So once this bracket is open, it says it needs a column called date. So this is the date column it needs. But before you define a column in DAX, you know that every column has a parent, right? 
every column has a parent table that it is. So the date column is inside the date table. So I'm going to, if I call dates, so I'm going to use, I'm not going to use date table, all right, but I'm going to use the date table dates. Hope you understand that. I'm not going to use the date table, but I'm going to call up the date table date. So if I hit on enter, I'm automatically going to have all the years extracted from here. So there's another way to do the same thing, which I like, I prefer better, which is I would use the format option, right? I could easily use the format option to do that. Then we could also call up our months and everything that we need to call up to populate that. So I'm sure that most of us already know how to use that the DAX column. Um, I already knew, know how to use uh, populate our date table. So I'm just going to move into writing some other simple codes that we can use with uh, DAX. Okay, so we're going to use some other stuff like we are going to try out how the sum works. We already know how sum works. Uh, then we are going to try out how sum x basically just works. And then we'll try out how calculates. Where is calculates? Yeah, we'll also try out how calculates works and so on. So just in a moment, I'm just going to use my auto code that I've written already just to save a lot of time. All right, I'm just going to use the code that I've written already to just populate this table. All right, so I'm just going to use this calendar table. So I'm just going to explain this code and then uh, we'll just go along with the class. So this is add column. Add column basically helps us to add more columns. So uh, the calendar auto is the column. Remember that the calendar auto, what it basically does is that as a table, just generates a table for you. But for me to be able to add other columns inside of this, I used add column so that I can add the year and then remember what we needed the year the dates right the month the month dates so the dates that this is going to generate is what we are using here then for the months we are going to use a format of mmm the quarter we are going to use the double q i'll just use a single q and then the year months and so on so this here is just to give us a guide that a weekday starts on monday you know that's on the general concept a weekday starts on monday on the um, sunday which is one so but for some organizations choose a uh, monday which is two is actually what the where the weekday starts and so on so if i just hit on enter that the table is going to be generated oh okay so i just need to take out this column Okay, so let's hit enter again. Okay, so let's hit enter again. All right. So we've been able to use that to generate the table. And then we have the year, the month, the month, um, month in short, the quarter, the year month, the weekday, and then the weekdays and so on. So let's look at how to use some other things inside. So if we go to our table, data table right now, we have it, the calendar table properly linked inside. Okay, so let's write some very basic DAX functions. Let's write some very basic DAX functions. Let's look at how some basic DAX functions work. So I'm going to just use the 
pre-written that functions for us and then explain the functions, how these functions work, instead of going through the process of typing each and every one of them. So let's say we wanted to extract, let's go to our data, total um, our data right now, and then go to our facts orders. So if we want to extract the total number of sales that is here, we already know that if we want to look at the total number of sales that is inside of here, then we are going to be looking at using the sum function. So if you look at here, the revenue, look at sum function, how sum function works. So it's very just very simple for you to see how others write their code, and then you get to have a good understanding of how it works. So you look at the sum function. Once you call up the sum function, what you need now need to call up is the column. So what's this column called? The sales column. So what am I going to call? You must call the table name, right? So if I call the column name sales, all right, and sales pops up, then I need to notice that there could be sales in other tables, just assuming it shouldn't be, but in some very uh, bad structure, structured database, there could be sales in other tables. So you must know the table in which you're calling up the function. So fact orders sales, and then if I get to close it, I'm going to have, the sum of my revenue. Then we also could look at another thing now. Let's say we want to look at the total. Remember we talked about how do we use the um, count rows, right? So let's say we talk about the total transactions. We need to know the total transactions that have been made. How do we know the total transactions? If I click on this, right? Let me see if this, okay, this is not, this gives me, a typical example, if you look at the down bar here, you see they have 9,994 rows. So we are trying to do a calculation of the total um, transactions. If we click on the total transactions, you notice that what we have is the count rows, fact order. So the total count rows does not ask us for a column. So let's look at what it does. Count rows says count the number of rows in a table. So count rows is looking for a table. So you must know the arguments that your DAX functions want. So I'm going to challenge you guys that, where's the total revenue sound up? Okay. So I'm going to challenge you guys that you need to take time out, just like when you were learning Excel, you took out time to understand the functions in Excel. All right, so that's basically what you need to do also with Power BI. Take out time, understand, how, what the functions and what they do. You see the functions I display on the screen? Those are the most used functions that you always come in contact with. All right, so we have the count rules. So count rules says I need a table, all right? So what am I going to return? I want it to count my fact orders table. So if I click on my fact orders table, close it and hit enter, you notice that it's close. All right. Somebody is asking, where's the total sum? All right. So let's go to the screen. Apologies. So I'm going to go to the screen and I'm just going to pick up a card visual to analyze it. So I'm going to drag the total transactions and put here. See, total transactions is giving me approximate 10K. Um, I do, if you don't want the approximation, you can just go to the call out values and then change the color values, not, not reference, color values, um, layouts, labels. Okay. So these guys could be very, very confusing at times. Um, layouts, art styles, no, 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 not what I'm looking for. Values, yeah. Let's look at the values. Okay. All right. This guy could be very confusing at times. So I can't pick out where to change it, but I know it's still under um it's under the call out values, but not your total transactions. Okay, display units, none. I don't want any display units. So you can see that we have 9994. Right. So so what you're asking for the total revenue. So let's look at this sales. And then let's pick our total revenue. Let me put it into this card, right? So did you notice that this, did you notice that this particular card here that we had the revenue, 
this is what we call the implicit measures, right? This is what we call implicit measures. The measures that comes with the, you look at this E here on our screen, I have a, a big E here. The measures that comes with your data are called implicit measures. So it sums automatically. And this is the DAGs that we are talking about, right? This is that what came in from our DAGs. The difference between these two is that when you are using implicit measures, you cannot modify your calculations. But when you're using explicit measures, you can basically modify your calculations. So let's say your boss now comes and says, um, Emmanuel, I multiply the value that we had by 1.5. Or let's say multiply it by 5. Let me use a visible value that everyone will see. If I click on the sales here, I can't do anything. But if I go to my revenue, I can just come here and say multiply this guy by 5. And once I say multiply this guy by five and hit enter, you're going to notice that I'm able to modify it. So that's why it's important that you don't use implicit measures. It is always recommended you don't use, use implicit measures, but use explicit measures, the ones that you program by yourself. So in case of times in which you need to do some kind of modifications and all that, then you're able to modify your data. All right. All right, so let's continue. Let's look at some other use cases of DAS. We talked about the um, we talked about iterating aggregators like the sum x that they help us when we want to do something calculations that has to do uh, with expression. All right, so let's look at what sum x can help us to do in this context. So if I go to my data, I have sales, I have quantity, I have profits, but my boss has asked me to do a calculation based on my cost. And for me to get my cost, I need to do a sales minus my profits, right? I need to do a sales minus my profits. So how am I going to do my sales? Sales minus my profit. So let's go to the cost. So if I okay, all right. Sorry, I think I'm about. Can you guys see hear me? Oh, please comment in the chat box if you can see hear me. Oh yes. Okay. All right. So I'll I'll just take the cost again. Yeah. All right, so I need to do a calculation to be able to derive a new column. You already know that if I'm supposed to do that calculation inside of here, I'm supposed to click on new column and I'm going to say sales minus profits, right? That's basically what yeah, I'm supposed to do. So let's click on, let's do that same calculation here. I'm going to say um, cost to equals to, I'm just going to use the sales minus profits. All right, so I'm just going to write this and then this guy is going to sum up all the costs for me. But because we do not want they, the, the, the disadvantage, this is still uh, this thing, but the disadvantage of this is that assuming I have 10 million rows inside of my data, that means I've created new 10 million rows. So I do not need 10 million rows because it's going to make my data slow. So rather, I could just use a DAX function to just calculate it. All right, so how do I know? Cost, I'm going to use my sum x. And one of the things that sum x, let me just clean this up so that we do it all together again. So I'm going to call up sum x. Use my tab button to select. Look at the conditions that the function is asking. It's asking for a table, right? It's asking first for a table. So I'm going to, it's asking me to specify the table which the data reside. So I'm going to say that this data reside 
inside of my fat orders table. So I'm going to call up my fat orders table, comma. And then it's now asking me for an expression. And we have both established that the expression that we need is our sales minus profits to give us our costs, right? That's basic mathematics that we all know. So I'm going to call up sales and then I'm going to put out of minus, I'm going to put off profits. So sales minus profits, then I'm going to close it. So remember when you open, you have to close. So if I hit on enter, then we have our costs. So let's compare the two costs together. So I'm going to just create a card. And then I'm going to compare the cost that is derived from a column. And then I'm going to also compare the cost that is derived from DAX. All right. There's no difference between the two of them. All right. Okay. So I wish we had more and more time for us. Okay. Why this spacing underline two? Thank you so much. Um, Abdul Wahid. All right, thank you. That's a very important question. Why the spacing? Okay, so there's what we call, um, there's a structure that we call, the reason why I did that is just so that my DAX is readable, right? This is what we call DAX formatting, right? So I, I don't have, um, I don't know the websites that can help you to do it. But one of the things that we do, I do with DAX formatting is that it helps you to break down or if another person picks up your DAX, your DAX code, it's readable. So imagine that I had all these, I had to write a multi space. Um, this is just because this is even a small DAX, right? Imagine that I now had to write um, DAX that had to do with a 50 codes of line, 50 lines of DAX, let me not call it code before some people start running, 50 lines of DAX or 20 lines of DAX. And I kept writing everything on one line, one line, one line. It's going to be difficult for you to read even when you come back in the future. So that's why it's important that when you're writing DAX, you break it down in such a way that it's easier for you to read and for you to understand. So just let people know, you can comment on your code, on your DAX code, you can use dash dash to comment, and then it's going to give you a green. So let's say analytics bootcamp costs, right? So it's important for you to also comment on your DAX code when you're developing so that in three, four, five, six months from now, when you're coming, you know exactly what you were doing. And uh, that's one way. I think the other way is the slash slash. Right. Yeah. Why the spacing? Awesome. So it was future referencing, just like R. Yeah. So you could also use double slash. All right. To comment on your code. So it's important that you do some commenting. All right. So do I have questions? If you have questions, please, you can just raise your hand so that you will mute it or put it up on the chat box. Um, if you don't have question, I can take one. Um, one more calculation and then would we'll call it a day. Yes. Okay. Please, okay, I think, I think uh, someone is yeah. raising up his hands. Can I omit him now? Yes, please. Yes, please. All right. So, Abdul Wahid, you can omit your mic. Abdul Rahman, rather. Okay. You already oh. unmute Abdul Wahid. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, thank you. Thank, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Emmanuel. Uh, this is actually my first time in DAX, but uh, one thing I think you help me with, I don't mind taking it as granular as possible. I remember when I started uh, data analytics, I was referred to storytelling with data and show me your numbers. Is there anything you can also refer for somebody to get his hand on good foundation on DAX very well? Thank you. That's my question. Okay, um, is there something I'm going to refer you to? Definitely, yes, but I think it's too complex for beginners. We call so it what do you have for beginners? Um, so I'm going to share material with uh, the host, and then they're going to share with, the, okay. with you guys on the group, yes. All right, awesome, awesome. Yes. Thank you very much. Yeah. All right, sir. Okay, someone is asking a question on the in the comment section that why have the data sets 
for the training. Okay. Yeah, oh, okay. Sure. Aisha. All right, Aisha. Uh, I don't understand the comments part. So this why are we commenting? Okay. So I'm just just going to start from the top co um, comments. Why are we commenting? So we are commenting so that in future we could know. So the reason why we comment is because if I have, I don't have a very complex DAX inside of this particular um, 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 data set. If it's in the data set that has to do with 15 lines of code, it is important that as you develop the DAX, all right, from step by step, you comment on each step, right? The reason why you're commenting is that you know what you did to be able to arrive at those answers. Because by the time you come up, you know that you, you're going to, as a data analyst, you're dealing with different clients, different data models. So if you do not comment, you would be at loss what you were actually trying to do. So you have to start all over again to try to read and understand the DAX code and all that. So that's basically um, why you should comment. It's important for you to comment on every line of code so that um, for future, just for the future reference. Um, Someone said, um, why should one use calculate? So what calculate helps us to do is that it helps us to change context. So if you look at this uh, revenue per month right now, I needed to calculate all the revenue from the previous month. So you see that for me, it's not even, let me know you something more simpler. Uh, let me see, gross margin, gross margin. Okay. Yes. All right, so I needed to calculate revenue for furniture. Let's look at this. I need to calculate my revenue for only furniture. So let's drag it also and add to this. Let's drag it and add here. So you see that out of my total revenue, my total revenue was um, 2.30 million. 2.30, they say, okay, I think there's a little bit of, I need to change the, hold on, let's change the unit to none. Yes, put a uh, sum of sales. Revenue for furniture. Okay, like my eyes are not correct right now. Just give me a moment. Last year for previous months. Ready for furniture and tech. Some point it's okay. I don't need this. I think there's a filter somewhere. But the reason why we use calculate is basically to change context. Right, you're trying to change context of a thing. So right now we needed to calculate revenue for just furniture, right? Out of the general revenue of 2.30 million, how do we get revenue for only furniture? So you want to break it down to just revenue for furniture. So that's when it's important that we use the calculate function. So you're trying to change a context and say, give me a portion of something. Instead of you giving me everything, just give me a portion of something. Oh yes, your commenting will not affect. That's why the commenting shows on green. If you notice that it changes to green, all right? Every other thing shows on blue and black. Ah, blue and black, that sounds familiar. So where the commenting would always show on green. So even if I comment here, let's say I space here and comment, hello, Right, it doesn't affect anything. That's why you're not you're seeing that I'm not having any errors because Power BI automatically understands that this is not a um, part of the formula because this double strike basically just wipes it out. Yes, somebody said commenting is very important for readability in all programming languages. Yes, why some X and not some? So somebody asked some X. Some X helps us to take takes an expression. If you look at some, some is a bit very limiting. So the only thing we can do with some is that if we call up some value, um, it's going to you're able to impute only a column, right? You cannot take expression. So I cannot say this minus this when I am using some, right? It's only asking you for a column name. But if you use sum x, sum x is going to ask you for a table and then for an expression.
Okay, so any other question? Okay, I think someone's hand is up. Um, Raham's hand is up. I hope I don't mother that name. Please, can you help me on mute, Raham? Oh, okay, Ra Ramon, you can omit your mic. Oh, see, I mother the guy's name. <laughs> Hello, good afternoon, Mr. Abasi. How about you? Chief, <laughs> you too. Uh -uh. All right. Uh -huh. <laughs> Be careful. Raman, <laughs> Raman. Raman, Raman. <laughs> Raman, okay. All right. Please, uh, can you explain the filter functions, like the all, all accepts, um, and so on? And also, okay. um, I think I understand the calculate parts. I've seen people use um, variable in their DAX function, like they would declare variable. I want to understand why and when it is necessary to do that. And also, okay. I have a I have a use case. To, um, um, so, okay, I, pre I I recently work on on a on a this data set and it's a car um, sales uh, data set. So, I was wondering if it is possible if there is um, how I can use time intelligence on Power BI to know the price difference from a uh, a particular car model that have different um, year of make. Okay, let's say Toyota Camry um, that is produced in 2012 and another Toyota Camry that's produced in um, 2024. Okay, or let's say 2012 and 2013, for example. So I want to know if it is possible to know the price difference from this that particular model. So that's my question. Okay, so can you take the last question again? I just want to have a clearer, a better understanding of what you mean. All right. Right. You want All to right. use time intelligence here. Yeah. Okay. I know I've seen people use um the year on year this thing. Um the yeah. same time last year, this uh, period. So I noticed that one is used to calculate um this particular year and the previous year. I yes. mean the last year. So I want yeah. I, I, I'm, so I'm not thinking in the case of a, a of a uh, of a particular car model that that the last time the the model was produced was not the last year but some years back you understand so and I'm interested okay. in knowing um how the the price uh, the price difference in, in the markets okay uh, not I just want to like kind of know the price difference of that particular model and the other model. Okay. I don't so know I think I understand. Yes, I understand right. your question. But before that question can easily be answered, you have to look at the structure of your data, how the data is structured. You know that you're not just going to use time intelligence information to write when the there's no niche down when it comes to that column that has to do with um, what you want. All right, so we need to look at your date column, All right? So um, I, I can't really pick how to advise you on that, except that I see your date column, the the way your date is structured, and then I can now I have the calendar table. I have the calendar table and um, the year of make in the no. normal fact table. Okay, so you have the year of make, All right? In the fact so table, I also what's... have the calendar table. Okay, so you have the year of make. All right. Yeah. And in each of the you have the year, the month, and the day of make, right? Yes. Yes. Yeah. So I'm basically what you want to track is that you want to track the last time a car was made. Yes. That's what you want to track. So let's say we have Toyota 2007. The last time it was produced was 2009. Is that what exactly what you want to track? Yes. Okay. So you have basically what you need to do is that. You need to do a filter. You're going to be using the filter color. Um, um, you're going to be using the filter condition to do that car model is equals to this and year equals to. So you're going to use, you're going to have to use multiple conditions for you to be able to achieve that. All right. You're going to be able to use multiple conditions. Um, I think we can just work something out to guide you through because this call that's going to be too advanced for people on this call right now so you could just um start working on it 
tag me on LinkedIn. I didn't say send me a DM. Tag me on LinkedIn. When you tag me on LinkedIn and say you're working on it, I'll, I'll be happy to help you out um, to create that logic. Shouldn't be too difficult for you to create. Yeah. So the second one is that when do you, you declare variables? All right. Yeah. When do you declare variables? So you declare variables when you want to simplify things, right? Basically, you want to simplify things. Sometimes when we are writing this DAX code, let me see, like revenue same period last year. This is because these lines of code are very simple. So why should I de declare variables? I don't use variables all the time, but I only use variables when I'm finding it difficult to break down things with these other DAX. So I'll, I'll now use variables to be able to break down. I say, okay, let's um, year be equals to 2007. Let this equals to 12. Then this plus this, the return this plus this. You understand? That's when you use variables. So you're trying to break down a problem. When you're trying to break down a problem, it's the right time for you to use variables. Yes, you get. I'm, I'm sure you get a copy. I don't know if they give a copy, but if they give a copy of today's slide, yes, I'm going to also share um, the analytics bootcamp. Um, I'm going to share what I'm using with you guys uh, once I am done. Okay, so um, what else? Think any other question? I hope I'm not eating to, into someone's time. Um, I hope I'm not eating. I know there's. I saw another session, but I, I can't I've forgotten the time. So I hope uh, no, I'm not no, not now. No, no, that one is still by five. Oh, okay, it's, that's by five. Okay, all right, no problem. All right, any other question, guys? Any other question? Any other question? Any other question? Any other question? Okay, so in the absence of any other question, um, thank you so much for having me. And um, it's good connecting with you guys. All right, so for all of you that are working on projects, make sure you connect with me on LinkedIn. All right, make sure you connect with me on LinkedIn. Um, so or I you can just you search for Zoom. Somewhere you oh, can unmute okay. your mic. Okay, please. My question, thank you very much, sir. My question is that uh, can you explain that uh, explicit and implicit again? Okay. Yes, yes, please. Thank you very much. All right. So we say that implicit functions are basically functions that came in with your data, right? That's what the implicit functions are. So when you have um, implicit functions, there are those data that came in those um um, um particular um, quantitative data that came in with your data so a typical example is that you had a sales column that came in with your data that's an implicit function but the explicit are basically the ones that you do calculations for all right so you did the calculations for them those are explicit functions so when you write a measure measure is an example of an explicit function so how do you differentiate between explicit and implicit functions. Explicit, you see that big E, I've forgotten how they call it, whether it's exponential or something in maths those days, All right? You're going to see that big E inside of that explicit, um, to know explicit measures. Once you see E, big E, that's an implicit. Explicit, you're just going to see like a calculator. That's a measure, All right? When you calculate it, you're going to see like a calculator. I don't know if that works, Samuel. Yes, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Hey. Please, are you still doing one more calculation like you said? Oh, okay. Um, uh, I said I'm going to do one more calculation. Okay, my time was up and I closed my power BI to send it. All right, so let me open it up. If there's any other question, let me get no guys. Any other question? Any other question? Any other question? Any other question? Is this submission symbol? Yes, submission symbol. Yes. 
um trying to open up my power bi to show you guys one more calculation but i think i've shown you the basic things you needed to know and that is all that um so guys as he's doing that i'll be dropping today's quiz as regards to what he has taught us so far in the um session in the section so please both the quiz and evaluation form please let's try as much as we can to um answer that please i just dropped it on the group now Oh, okay. So I think it's open now. So let me show us one more calculation. So I'll just go to the facts table. All right. So if I want to calculate the let me use the a table now to review this. So I'm just going to use a table. Okay, not sure why it why it hit me a bit slow today. All right, so this exam typical example. So this is my year month. This is the revenue that was generated each day, and then this is the revenue for same period. SPLY is the standard name for same period last year. So I wanted to return the revenue for same period last year. So you see this. This is fourteen. 14 to 36 is returned. So let me see month on month. Let me look at our gross margin. So if you look at our gross margin, this is what we have as our gross margin. So how are we going, how do we calculate our gross margin, guys? Let me see. How do we calculate our gross margin? So our gross margin is actually our revenue minus our cost. So we have our revenue. Let me bring in my cost here um costs right so we have our revenue and then we have our costs so you, we bring in my gross margin you see that it's just the difference of these two All right okay so finally i wanted to show us how another thing will gross margin percentage how does gross margin percentage work so if i click on my gross margin percentage it's going to be a divide so all you need to do is sorry is divide your gross margin by your revenue and that's what gives you your gross margin percentage so those are just some of the basic docs that you need to know yeah okay so about the mastering docs is today's for reporting is today's topic and i think we'll just end um, leave it there for now so i'm going to send you this file that contains all the file all the docs that um we've written there and then you can just keep studying and studying those dax functions and all that all right so um thank you so much to our hosts my boss adewale and all the team that are putting this together so this is me saying a very big thank you thank you for all of, to all of you also for agreeing to come over and learn I'm trusting that this is going to spark um, another level, right? In terms of your interest in um, another level, in terms of your interest in the um, um, data, right? And then you just keep growing and growing. So have a very, very good weekend and have bye bye. All right. Thank you very much, Mr. Imane, um, for the wonderful section. We really appreciate your time, sir. Thank you very much. So please, let's appreciate Mr. Um, Emmanuel. And as usual, please, everything we've learned today, let's go on LinkedIn post. You can always tag him, tag the um, Adewale 
and and the like. So thank you very much for having uh, for coming here, Mr. Joseph. Thank you. Um, please um for everyone have a good day. Thank you very much for joining too. Bye bye.